we will start with the news that Mohamed Salah has been voted Player of the Year by the Football Writers Association. It is the second time since 2018 he was also named that, but he was named ahead of Kevin De Bruyne and Declan Rice as well. I'm not going to go to Stevie. I'll go to him in a moment. Shaka, right choice. Yeah, I, I think given Mo Salah's contributions in, in the league, I, I understand the debate for Kevin De Bruyne, given City's own successes uh, so far this season. But more times than not, if it's a close call, default goes to the striker. Mo Salah, given who he continues to be, it's, it's, a, it's a hard argument not to, not to make. Would you say it's the right decision, Stevie? Yeah, absolutely. It's, listen, the game's about goals at the end of the day. That's why we play, uh, is to score goals. Everybody wants to be that guy. And this guy's got, what, 22 goals in 31 games? You can't argue with that. So, That's yeah, not why absolutely. I, played. I didn't play to score goals. You would have failed miserably. I'm not sure that that's relevant here. <laughs> There's always the exception. <laughs> Maybe that's why I didn't win it. Yeah. And then just to clarify, it is in England, it's the Football Writers Association. What's the reaction been from what you've seen, Jules, over in England? Really positive. I think we, we pretty much all agreed that Mo Salah was the, the outstanding winner, really. I think he got 50% of the votes, which is very rare, trust me, uh, in this in this vote. Well, all the, the journalists that are uh, affiliated to, the, um, to, to the, the Journalist Federation, Sports Federation, if you want, in, in the UK can vote. Uh, and you vote for your top three. Uh, and I think there was never in doubt that it was not going to be Mo Salah. You, of course, you can make a case maybe for Kevin De Bruyne. I think Sadio Mane is a bit lucky not to be in the top three. I understand Declan Rice is English, which I think helped a lot for him to be third. And he's having a wonderful season with West Ham. But he's not the third best player in the league this season, let's be honest here. Uh, so I feel a bit for Sadio Mane. But I think Mo Salah, w without a doubt, is, is a worthy winner. Are you allowed to say who you voted for, Jules? Yeah, yeah, Mo Salah, yeah. yeah. I, di I didn't think about money, to be honest. Uh, but I've seen so many moments being in the stadium this season covering the Premier League of, of Salah just having touches of geniuses. Obviously, the two goals against Watford and City, who are the goals of the season. The pass, the pass for money against City in, in the return fixture. For all those moments, even when he was not scoring at the, after the turn of the year, after the disappointment of AFCON, even when he was not scoring in those games, he was still doing something special. And he's a very special player, so he deserves it completely. Um, yeah, and do you not think they should wait till the end of the season before oh. voting on this? Mm -hmm. Don't tell the English what to do, Kay. I mean, they got tradition. They do this before the end of the season. Of course they do. But... Uh... They could have waited for that, uh, but uh, wouldn't have stopped quarrelling about it anyway. Uh, I think Salah, just by his numbers, he earned a right to win that. And he's also a little extra. He, he is an artist. He's, he's unbelievable, entertaining to watch. Uh, traditionally, when you see these awards, the defenders and the goalkeepers, hello, Shaka, they are all never up there in, in those awards. I would like to see Virgil van Dijk there. I think van Dijk is unbelievable. Best, one of the best. Well, maybe the best uh, defender of his generation. And uh, Rice can't even win against Eintracht Frankfurt, can he, Shaka? <laughs> right, before I get Ali's thoughts on this, what do you think of Declan Rice being there in the top three? I, 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 I have no, no issue with it. I, I understand Jules' point that maybe he's not the third best player in the league, but I think, for, for me, I, I always look at, at, at team performance. And I know we're talking about individual an individual award here, but... West Ham, again, exceeded expectation. And, and you could even make the argument that more than anybody else, everybody expected City and Liverpool to be, to be in the top two. Nobody expected uh, West Ham to be in the Europa League semi-final and, and, get, and, and get in the better of Eintracht Frankfurt over two legs. Um, <laughs> so you, you can, from, from that perspective, you could make the argument that Declan Rice, as the standout player, I know there are a couple others in, in Bowen and Michael Antonio, but Declan Rice certainly is the one who's, who's getting all the headlines. Why, why he's on the list or he's on the short list? Any problems with the top three list there for you, LA? No, my, my problem is with the question that you asked, Jan. I, I, I don't understand how we vote on something well ahead of time, well ahead of the end of the season. Who, Who's to say that both of these players go on and have outstanding ends of the season? But what if one of them is significantly better than the other and that guy's team goes on to win 
the title, then shouldn't that put you over the top? Uh, when we talk about the Ballon d'Or, and we, Lord knows that we talk about Ballon d'Or more than we should, well, one of, the, one of the things that we use to differentiate players is, well, he won the Euros with Italy, or he won Champions League with Chelsea. In this case, we cannot even use that. You can't say, well, he won the title with Liverpool or Manchester City. It makes he absolutely won. no sense from the outside looking in. It makes absolutely no sense that you're voting on something when the season hasn't finished just yet. See what the outcome is going to be, and then from there, see the full performance and the length of performance from both players, and then go on and vote whichever direction you want to go. Uh, Stevie Nicholl won this award back in 1989. We've got no complaints about that. Tough competition. Tough competition. Hey! Oh, man. You're looking into my eyes. Oh, you whistle. What? Absolutely. I couldn't believe when I went to the dinner. There was a dinner. Uh, the following year after I won it, um, it was the 50th anniversary of the of the award, and the pe the players that were there that I when I grew up watching, and I'm sat at the table and I'm thinking, I'm sitting, I'm sat next to these guys, Dave Mackay's and Bobby Collins. I mean, I'm I'm throwing all the Scottish guys in, but you know players like that, and I'm I'm sitting there going, I, I'm sat next to these. That's not bad. It, it's, it's telling that Stevie wins this award. And his takeaway memory is dinner. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And that you had to wait a year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Can't believe I went to dinner. <laughs> but you know what you should yeah. do? Yeah. You know what yeah, you should just... do is whoever, whoever wins it, Jules, at the dinner when they get the prize, they should do the masters. Pick, pick the meal. That's what they should do. Oh. I can have everybody oh. eating mince and Yeah, that's a, good, that's a good idea. <laughs> Turnips. <laughs> <laughs> I've been I've been to some of the, I've been to some of, some of those dinners in London, and I'm surprised that Stephen Nichol remembers anything. To be fair, when you see see these awards, uh, but I played against Stevie at that time, and we can we can have a go at him. But Stephen Nichol, he was a tough guy to to play at. So I think at that time he would be our Salah, and we will all say, yeah, great choice. Stephen Nichols should be there on the top. Uh, thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.